All right, here they are. I got something fun for you guys today. Uh, we've got a really neat old set of drill bits and uh, take them for a little test drive. I think most of them were, maybe even all of them, they were all never it's used. A set of Irwin auger bits. And uh, I'm pretty certain that these things have never been used. But uh, you can look, let me see if I can show this to you. But they're just in excellent condition. They haven't been abused at all, that's for certain. Um, let me get the big one. Set goes from a quarter inch all the way up to one inch. This one here, this one almost looks like it got rusty. I don't know, it's, or maybe that's just how it was made, but you can see there's like a little kind of pitting on the outside there, even on the inside. I don't know. Maybe somebody switched out a drill bit on me. But that's the worst looking one. All the rest of them are really, really good. Still shiny like they were new. Just a little tiny, just a little bit of surface rust. And the screws are perfect. This is just a really, really great set. And uh, I've used them. Um, in fact, I used the, the three quarter, where is that one at right here? This one here, I used that to drill all the holes for my bench dogs and my workbench. And I touched up the, the cutting edges on that a little bit when I used it. Um, but I don't believe I've done, done no harm to this thing. I don't know, I might have to watch uh, old Sneelock's video on how to sharpen these things again. Just make sure everything's in good shape. That's them. Um, I'm not sure when these things were made, but they don't put things in oak boxes like this anymore. Uh, maybe old Sneelock can enlighten us a little bit in the comments. Anyway, uh, they say we put it in a brace and we'll put a couple of holes in a few different pieces of wood here just to see how they run. All right. Here's another one of the tools I really love to use. This is a, a Miller Falls a number 732 10 inch brace. And man, this, this is a really nice brace. It's ratchets both ways. And even up here at the top, there's ball bearings in this thing. And look at how good that spins. Coca Bola knob and handle. Yeah, the, I don't know if the handle, yeah, I think that probably is Coca Bola. Uh, that's expensive materials, you know. But uh, I really like using good quality tools. Uh, it's kind of inspirational, I suppose. If you're going to have a tool, it might as well be a good one. All right, got to load it up. Oh, don't need to be ratcheting. All right, that's how well this thing drills. And maybe I'll move the camera back and I'll show you this here, but a lot of times if I'm starting a hole like this, it's it's kind of good to lean your forehead on the, on the hand that's holding the palm there. And it gives you a good line of sight. I need a better clamp here, I think, huh? Let's see if we can tighten that up. All right, let's try this again. There we go. This is just a little piece of plywood. I've got some slightly harder materials. We could try drilling some holes in that too. Went too far. <laughs> well, I'm sure that probably blew out a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Not too bad, though. That is my fault. All right. Let's try a piece of uh, poplar, huh? Let's try that out. All right. Like I said, this is kind of my favorite technique for starting. It really helps keep you stable. All right. At least until you're into the wood some. Huh? 
I think I need to practice my drilling technique. I keep pushing right on through the bottom each time. Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. If you do it without any pressure at the end, it shouldn't it shouldn't cut out. And then what you can do is flip it over. And you see you got your little hole there. Where your pilot come through. And you can come back in from this side. And this will score it. A lot of times it'll pop out just a little disc. There it is. Half of it anyway. The other half fell into the hole. Let's have a look at the quality of this hole. This is probably was meant for more for drilling into soft woods like this. Or pine or something. see and you see inside of there pretty decent looking hole nice and round it's pretty smooth it's not polished or nothing but all right let's see how this stuff drills in a piece of hickory I've never drilled anything this hard probably let's see if it'll go Well, I can really tell that's a hard piece of material there. <laughs> yeah, we're overpowering the clamp. Hang on, let me go get something here. All right, clamp the batten down on the other end of this board so it won't keep twisting it around. Let's see what we can get here. Looks like pretty decent shavings to me. Just starting to come through the other side. Okay. Stopped cutting now. A little forehead pressure here and punch through, huh? Well, without that center pulling it along, it sure don't want to cut too well here in this hard stuff. There we go. There's a little disc. I made a pretty good hole too. Let me show you that one. It's all right in there. It's not all splintered up. And again, it's not a perfect hole, but that ain't a bad hole.
If you guys like this kind of content, go ahead and click on the uh, subscribe icon. It'll show up at the uh, end of the video. And uh, feel free to uh, put a little something in the tip jar if you uh, feel so inclined. That'll be showing up uh, here in just a few moments. All right, well, many of you guys know I'm really into antique tools and machines and just the way things used to be done years ago. Uh, you know, make sure to put your drills away. They're really nice. I want to leave them laying around. But uh, sometimes antique tools are hard to find. Like, uh, say if you want a spoon bit, per, perhaps, you know. And, uh, I, I've never seen one come up for sale anywhere I've ever been. Uh, but there is a company, Lee Valley, up in Canada, uh, under their brand Veritas. Uh, they sell brand new spoon bits. So uh, I've got a set and even the ream for doing uh, chair making type work. And uh, so why don't we just have a look at those two. All right, guys. So this is the spoon bit that I was talking about. And if you can see, it's essentially a cylinder that's been cut in half. And the cutting edges are on the inside here, and it, it runs all the way around the tip. And in fact, actually, it'll cut in both directions if you, if you want to turn it that way. Uh, but you can see why they call it a spoon bit, right? Uh, kind of looks like a marrow spoon, really, if you know what one of those is. Anyway, let's uh, see if we can't put a hole over here in this uh, piece of wood. All right. Let's see if we can make us a hole in this thing here. The nice thing about this kind of a bit, like I was saying a minute ago, is you can you can kind of steer it. So you see, I've just in a couple of turns there, it's made a little divot. Well, if I if I hold it this way here a little bit, I can actually kind of push that divot that way until I get to the diameter that this thing, you know, the maximum diameter. But I can correct a little bit here. Uh, if you see, I can. Sort of move it back this way. Anyway, the other nice thing is once you got it started like this, uh, oftentimes in chair making, you know, the the dowels that are on the stretchers are not always at, right at 90 degrees. So, you know, you, you can tip this whatever direction you want. The regular auger bit, once you get it started, well, you're committed to that angle. You can't change. So that's why they prefer this kind of a drill for, for making chairs. You can correct your mi mistake here before you're too far. Anyway, here, let me slide you back a little bit. All right, that should be better. Now this one you got to put down pressure on it the whole way. It doesn't have anything guiding you. I make these really neat little look like pencil shavings almost. Another reason this is good for making chair parts is when you get to the bottom of a, a hole, when you're gluing a dowel into the, the leg of a chair, well, you don't want it to, you know, have waste too much depth. You know, you want to be able to get as close as you can to the surface without spoiling it. And uh, you can stop short, and because it's round, well, you, you can have the dowel on this one here, well, I would say within a half an inch of it, with an auger bit, well, that the little lead screw would be that long for even... You know, it's just uh, a little bit safer. You know, you can put a little mark on here, I guess, or something, too, to guide you. But anyway, that's a, I kind of blew the hole here. I went too far, but that's all right. Just demonstration. You guys see inside of that? It doesn't have quite the clean entry that the other drills do, but... That's all right. Works great for its intended purpose, and that's that's really the key to most tools is using them what they're supposed to be used for. All 
All right, guys, this is the uh, the ream for, uh, say, if you're going to put the legs into the seat of a, like a Windsor chair, uh, this is what you'd use to drill the taper into the seat. So uh, let's, uh, let's see if we can go ahead and ream out one of these holes we made here earlier. I don't have anything uh, to complement it, but um, the nice thing about this is just like your Morris taper and your lathe, you know, once you put the parts together, they kind of tend to lock together and they would even come from the opposite side. This side here, they would cut a slot in the end of the leg and drive a wedge in there. So it's really locked in there now. And uh, just the, the weight of the person sitting in the chair is gonna wanna tend to drive this taper together tightly. That's why those things last for, you know, several hundred years, you know. Anyway, let's get to work. All right, I'm pretty sure this is the first time this uh, this tool has touched anything in anger. So let's have a look, see how well she cuts. Mm -hmm. Seems to be working pretty well. In fact, it looks like that's already cut it out to the maximum diameter. Bad piloting here, I think. There we go. I'm not sure what's going on, but we're kind of getting a little weird thing happening right there. It's probably, uh, oh, I know what it is. We're cutting against the grain on the back cut here, going in two different positions. Oh, that's kind of an interesting thing to note. Let me uh, see if I can bring you in a little closer here and show you what's going on. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you want to see more like that, go ahead and uh, hit the subscribe button here. And uh, check out these other videos that will be coming up here in just a moment.